What is that courtesy of Trevor Sparks? I like to say, if the governor is going to be on live on my show, I got to play one of her favorite artists, them. So, people, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce to Coffee Radio, not the first time, but the official time on my show, the governor of the West Indies, the right honorable Bob Z. <laughs> the right honorable. <laughs> I like it, boy. I don't like it. <laughs> Go on, Junior. What's you going on, Uba? Hey, it, this is what I'm going to do. Since you're going to give your state of the Caribbean address, and I'm going to let people know this wasn't pre-planned. It's just that I'm going to coin it as the state of the Caribbean address. I'm going to leave the floor open to you, then I'm going to right. ask you some questions. All right, good, good, good. We're ready, we're ready. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to ask me the questions or you want me to start no, just going and... Give your address first because I know you have a lot to get off your chest. All right, well, well first I want to big up all the people that are listening because, you know, I got a lot of fans calling in and messaging me, Marlon's mom, Green, and Deneen, and all these people, oh, Nika and them. So I just want to say hi to everybody. So, you know, the last month I've been taking real licks from Jamaicans. And since you are Jamaican, I said, let me talk to you about why these people beating up on me. We can but, do that, right, Junior? Yeah, we can do that. But hold on. I don't mean to cut you, but like you just said, that since I am Jamaican, and right. I understand, I understand, I understand, but I want everybody to understand what you're saying. Because you did say you're getting real licks from Jamaicans. Right. Clarify the word licks definitely, please, before Okay, start. so... <laughs> They, they, they mashing up, they mashing me up verbally on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and thing, right? Yeah. So the reason for them to be disgruntled with me was a video blog that I did, which was after Carnival in Jamaica. So Carnival in Jamaica is at the largest it's been since it started, which means it's getting the sponsorship, police doing the barricades in the road. All this kind of thing. So a lot of the people in the industry are like, yo, I want to turn to Soul Castle. Wow, God. I want them to dance out. So I did a video explaining why promoters and other people are now turning more towards getting Soka acts and supporting Soka as opposed to supporting dance hall. So I highlighted a few key factors which was just the slip in lyrics totally when it comes to dancehall. Majority of the songs, yes, there's still artists out there that are, you know, representing, but for the most part, you know, the lyrics, them, loo. You know what I mean? Yes. So when you have that versus soca lyrics, which are kind of a little bit more like jump and wave and happy and this and that, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a lyrical issue. Um, the issue is with, you know, some of the um, antics that have lately been going on in dance hall where people are climbing towers and people are lying about tattooing their eyes and it's just madness. And it's like soca people are just making music. They're not climbing towers and doing all of that. You know what I mean? To, to get the music out there, they're just putting it out there. And, you know, so I highlight a few things, but realistically, with dancehall right now, and I know, Junior, you're Jamaican, and I know you're honest, and I know you know exactly what I'm talking about, the level of disrespect that these artists show people out here it is at an all-time high. I don't know what is going on with these dancehall artists, but they, they just feel like they can just talk to you any or how. And... Soka artists are not really like that. They haven't reached that stage yet where they just style you off and wire you off and talk to you in any old house. So promoters now are like, why am I going to go and call so-and-so artist to get him on a show when I can call, you know, a little Rick who they're going to be professional and they're going to pull in the same amount of people and I'm going to still make the same amount of money. So that's the line that ticked off everybody, that they said that I said dancehall artists are disrespectful, but they are. And, and and people have to be honest about it because it's like, can't keep burying your head in the sand. So with me, I'm like, you know, I don't even really have an interaction that much anymore with artists because I 
will pop off back on them. So it's always this back and forth. And it's over simple things, just having no manners. And maybe people don't understand what manners is, you know, from a North American standpoint to maybe, you know, a Caribbean standpoint. But there's a certain way you have to conduct yourself with people, and they, and they, and they just don't seem to understand that. So that's where people got really upset, what I'm saying. You know, a lot of the dance artists are, are highly disrespectful. So I take it to you now. You know, you would be dealing with these artists for shows, for dub plays, these kind of things. Do you not see an influx of disrespect lately when it comes to these dancehall artists? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, honestly, yes. I wouldn't, I personally, I wouldn't use the word I wouldn't say disrespect. I don't know. It, all right, let me just let me just premise it by saying this because coming from a Jamaican perspective, you know a lot of Jamaicans are going to say, "I." Know, a lot of Jamaicans are going to say, "But wait, Bob's not come from Jamaica. So how shall come this dance up? That that's going to be their first, the first right. step. So that's that's the right. first barrier they put up. The right. second barrier they put up is. What Bob's in know about dance hall? That's the second barrier they put up. Right, right, right. Right? And the third barrier they put up is you they just feel like our our I say we, or I say us, feels like it is an attack on our culture. Because in Jamaica, for dance hall especially, dance hall has been getting a fight locally in Jamaica from when my eyes there are my knees coming up. People used to call right. dance hall boogie yaga, blah 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 blah. So, right, 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 right. so it, they might feel very defensive now when you when they see an quote unquote outsider throwing words at something. Now that doesn't mean that they are I don't think they have their head in the sand. I I think a lot of people, a lot of Jamaicans know the state of dance hall. A lot of Jamaicans know the state of dance hall. But you have those that would rather say let Jamaicans handle it. Now, with that being said, to answer your question, yes, dance hall is at an all-time low. A lot of people will want to fight me about that too. But a lot of people with sense will look at you and say, you know what, Babsy, you're kind of right because Keisha asked me a question what day and asked a lot of us a question what day. I'm not going to ask you this question. Babsy, give me the, give me the five hot dance hall songs from eight, nine months ago. <laughs> Boy! Uh, exactly. No, you, you never have to try. That exa- that's exactly the issue. A lot of these songs are coming out that they don't last a month. Where's the right. artist them? If, if somebody look at you and say, who is the hot new artist in dance hall? People are going to struggle. They're going to give you the top five, the obvious five. But after right. that, they're going to struggle. So you're right. Dance hall is at an all-time low. And, and I think a lot of people, if they're honest with you or honest with themselves, they're going to agree with you. It's just one of those things where it's almost like with your child. If your teacher tells you your child is very disrespectful, first you're going to be very defensive. But behind closed doors, you're going to say, you know, my pick me really, really bad enough. So... <laughs> Okay, so here is the problem with that. You pick me bad. You go to the school. You talk to the teacher. In front the teacher and in front the pick me, you're standing up there defending the pick me. So now the pick me feels defended. So now when you have a terrorist on your hands, you're like, oh, the, the people them wayward, but it's, but it, you 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 bent the tree in the wrong direction yeah, from exactly. start. You understand yeah, what I mean? Exactly. As it pertains to as it pertains to culture. It's funny because a, a Jamaican will come and tell you about Biggie Smalls and Tupac and, and, and leaders of the underground and, 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 like, and talk to you about hip-hop like they were there. So how come they can talk to you about Tupac versus Biggie or Jay-Z versus Nas, but you can't talk about dancehall back to them because it's theirs. But they can be up in the Nicki Minaj and Safari drama, but you're not supposed to say nothing about Gully Bop and Amory and, and, and Chin. It, it's this, it's a double standard Jamaicans, a lot of them have. It's like the minute you open your mouth about Jamaica, they want to kill you. Uh, but then they're all up. They're all up in everything else. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you hear Bon Jamari to say, and that's Trinidad, and you stay out of that. Because well, you want to go to your thing, so you stay out of our thing. Well, you're, but, no, 
No, well, you hear me, you know? Let me tell you something. Jamaican men never cheat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, it is what it is. I'm so astute. Right. So, <laughs> when they question my... When they question my background in dance hall, it's like, to me, I'm laughing because dance hall and understanding it and knowing it's ins and outs has nothing to do with being Jamaican. Yes, it originated in, in Jamaica and it's a primarily Jamaican uh, genre, but like when I'm eight years old and Terror Saw gets killed and I'm bawling my eyes on the road because in the dance Friday night that I'm not supposed to be in, but I'm squeezing in while they're setting up the, the, the manish water and the cow foot soup, you can't take that from me and be like, oh, well, you're Beijing, so you weren't there when Tenor Saad died and Nitty Gritty made the track for him, and I was there. So it's like when they're looking at me trying to talk to me and discredit my dance hall knowledge, I'm like, what do you know? You didn't even know who Squucky Ranks was when he died in the car accident the other day. I had to tell you who he was. So how come all of a sudden, just because you're Jamaican, you trump me, and you don't even know the history, but I'm discredited because I'm a woman, and I'm Beijing, and I live in Canada, so me no for talk. And, yes. and, and, and it's that mentality where what I'm saying is true. And instead of getting defensive, fix the situation. So if you go into the Olympics and you want to win the 4x100, you're going to send the Asafa Usain Bolt Johan Blake team. But what's happening in the dance hall is they 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 paying, paying their way through and they're bringing forward people who, who can't run. So you don't want Sky Juice anchoring your 4x100 <laughs> and with these feelings being the third leg. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that's what's happening. These guys have the links and they're the, they're the connection. So they get on the team, and it's like you don't have the best people representing you. There are people in Jamaica that are amazing at dancehall, but they can't get to the, the, the ears of the producers like they used to back in the day because Sly and Robbie and these guys knew how to pick people. But these, these engineers now know how to match beats on a computer. They don't know dancehall. So they don't know the difference between a Devin, the doctor, and an alkaline. You know what I mean? They're going to be like, yo, everybody have voice alkaline, so we have voice alkaline too. But they don't know that Devin the doctor is the better artist. He's the better entertainer. But he's just not getting the connection to get out there. So that's the problem with dancehall. The problem with dancehall is a technical issue. It's a very technical issue. You, 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 because you, when, you really think it's a technical issue? I yes, think because I, when, I, when, yeah. when Ninja Man heard Shaba the first time, Ninja Man took Shaba to the studio. That's not happening anymore. When Ninja Man hearing Shaba in this era, the the first thing they do is bond them out. Yo, why you take your voice? Um, Shaba man, have voice with you, you know. That's what that's what they're doing out here. And these engineers are just going with that instead of saying, yo, you you can't really tell me who to voice and who not to voice, you know. They whimper out and they're like, all right, well, true, say, you know, Alkaline has four big hits on the radio, so we have to voice him. So he doesn't want these artists on the rhythm with him. We're not voicing them. That is what's going on. It's a technical issue. Right, Engineers let me, let me, are supposed let me, to direct. Let me, ask, let me ask you this question then, because I'm going to play devil's advocate. And for all the people I'm going to listen right now, before I ask this question, let's, let's, let's just bury the hatchet or bury, bury whatever foolish mindset you guys might have out there Bobsy. Bobsy is extremely knowledgeable. I am not the most knowledgeable person in music but me and Bobsy will hold some conversation about music and Bobsy will bring up some things to me when me, me said, Jano we will talk about some tunes and some artists and some, some, some times that people out there that say that they are dancer connoisseurs have no idea about. So let's just Let's just bury that. And me can talk as a fact. I've known Babsy for years. Babsy know the industry. Babsy know the people in the industry. So when Babsy tell you things, it's not half no hype or no social media, half no blogs. Babsy is telling you straight from the source. And it's not, I'm a good friend still. I mean, different her to the end, but if Bob's the wrong, Bob's the no, I would tell yeah, you wrong. Yemen, real talk, you would be in me, but yo, right, nah, right. Hey, 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 youth, hey, hey, youth, hey, youth, hey, youth, hey, that's our work. Bob's it, Bob's it. You, you said a lick thing first, you hear what you said a while ago, I will be in <laughs> you. Listen to me, I don't want nobody to drink no lemonade because of me, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> You, 
Y'all trauma, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I'm, hey, I, hey, you're thinking well yeah. publicizing us, so I ain't saying Kevin, nothing. Kevin drinks Mardi and coconut water. Yeah, I'm I, about to drink lemonade. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, <laughs> I don't want when you're reaching, you see, instead of coconut water, you see grapefruit juice. <laughs> Right. Yo, you're so, yo, you're so ridiculous. I'm man. just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So my but, question but, you know, is this. Uh, it, it, it's, but it's, to tell you the truth, Junior, yeah. and the problem is, too, that women in the industry, a lot of them don't do business in the industry. They're pretending to do business in the industry. So then now somebody like me, who's 110% about business, I butt heads with these people. Because when they're telling me to sleep at their house so I can MC an event, I'm like, what? We, we, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? And it's like, that's what discredits a lot of what I say because of a lot of what the women in the industry are doing. Everybody thinks everybody's out here trying to get attention and trying to look fame. So when I come and I talk, they're like, yeah, I want to read that gal that way. You know what I mean? That's the first thing that runs to their mind because they, they realize what's going on, especially with a lot of the other women in the industry. No, but, but you know what, though? And I do I know you remember this years ago. I think it's um, it's probably almost five years ago. Is when I first started radio, and it's when me and your first link up. You and did we, my first interview ever. Right, I did your first interview ever. People that are history, and I, I have the audio somewhere. I gotta go find it. But, yeah, man. But Bobsy, that first interview, I remembered asking you this question, seeing that you are creating a niche, and I remembered asking you what you say coming out of the video blog in years and you did say you're going to see a lot of people come out and do it and follow it but they're not going to fit they, they won't have the, much your authenticity but right you still have a lot like it is so saturated because one the internet is free right everybody is queuing in on that right now you see right now facebook a dj can go on facebook and broadcast live free all you need, I would, I, I've never broadcast before, but I'm assuming that it's a free thing. I'm going to see some mm-hmm. broke mm-hmm. people that do it. So, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but everything is free. So, the market gets saturated. And you said that you believe the problem with dancehall is technical. I believe the issue with dancehall is, you made, made a key comment where you said, Ninja here, Shaba, a DJ, and bring him go to the studio. To, in today's day, if Ninja hears Shaba DJing, he doesn't go to the studio. You know where Ninja brings Shaba to his house, and him have a MacBook, and him give him a mic with a little cheap mixer, and say Shaba voice on this rhythm. And when him voice on the rhythm, Ninja goes out and say Ninja is his producer. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't get he doesn't get the actual work from a Triton for argument's sake. Triton no get right. a chance to produce him. Right. That, them, them man, they don't, them man, Dave Kelly don't even see these artists. Right. So when Dave Kelly, Triton, looking up now and saying, Jano, how am, I, how am I going to keep up with the Joneses? Because you have so much people out there. I can produce a tune in my little Fufu studio right now, and I can produce a high quality track. Right. So when them producers now look at it, I have, I have reason with some producers after here, when I can call them name. And the man them say, yo, it's kind of hard for them now to put all the effort in making a good track when a Mickey Mouse track is out there running the world. Why waste the time? Why not match what is going on? So it's that, 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 that sounds like, oh, the, why must I get an A in class when the whole of my friend them I get a C? I need to get an A because I need to get in university. My friends might not be going there. So that's the mistake these people are making. The, 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 the heavier, more known producers are needed and they're required. The same way the, the, the bloggers like me are needed and required. And when you see the other ones wither away and you see Babsy still standing there, you have to understand why Babsy's still standing there. Because these people are building their house on sand and, and my foundation set properly. So that's where the problem is. These, these, these engineers who have the, the knowledge, they, they, they're wimping out. If you want a six-pack, you have to get up every day and do 100 sit-ups. You can't get a six-pack from just chilling out and doing nothing. So, yes, it's hard. But as, as you get better, it gets harder. 
So you saying Bolt trains. You know much how many hours a day he trains? That's why he's the fastest man in the world. Because if me and you want to be fast like him, we got to be ready to train 10 hours a day. We're not ready to do that. True. So that's why these that's why these engineers come and they go and they come and they go. Don't you notice? Since me and you've been linking, there's been the Don Carleons and the Sean Nizzles and the Frasses and the Liquids, and they all go up and down and up and down. But why is it that the Dave Kellys can always lick a hit out for six and century when they step on the cricket field every time because they know it. So it's them that gotta come in and and put. Okay, you see in the Olympics, they'll put in a, a 1,500-meter race, they'll put in a rabbit runner to keep the pace of the, the, the race fast. That's who the Dave Kellys and them are. They got to stay in the race and pace out the race to keep the people running up fast like them. They're not, they're not supposed to give up and then let the, 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 the fastest time be four minutes when the real fast time is a minute. They got to push these people to run faster. True, true. They can't just give up and be like, nah. Let, let, let these guys put these Mickey Mouse songs out, run the place. No, no, no. You got you to gotta turn it around and be like, no, they have to catch me. I'm not, com- I'm not coming down to them because they got to save dance hall. They're the, pe- they're the veterans and the pioneers. They yeah. have to save it because they understand it. So let me ask you this then. And what role do you think DJs play in all of this? Well, there's a difference between a DJ and a selector, right? Like for me, you're you, you are a selector because you know how to select music. The modern term DJ are dudes with serratos that match beats, and they drive me crazy because you should not be mixing Arab attack with a tune that Gage is singing. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you, you mash up the Arab them. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, you, it's like they don't. They don't understand the music. They go and they look on somebody's list of a top ten. Five of those songs were bought. The, the spot was bought. So then they go and they go in the dance and they play that. And then they go and they run to four more dances for the night. So the same DJ coming on after him, who's playing four dances for the night too, comes and plays back the same exact songs. Yo, back in the 80s and 90s, a DJ come back and play a tune. And eat. Yo, he can't even have to get security to walk into his car. <laughs> Yo, Stone, you know what I mean? Junior, you know. So it's like, to see these guys playing five and six times a night the same song, I'm like, whoa, when did this happen? You couldn't even do this back in the day. Yep. Back in the day, you, you had to, and then you didn't even have no, no beats to match. You had to go in your box and then dig through. So you might have pre-selected songs you wanted to play, and then Fire Links was on before you. Now what are you going to do? You have to go back in your box and dig and, and, and show that you have skill and you can play something different from him. So that, that whole art of DJing is lost. Well, you, know, you know, personally, from a DJ perspective, and hopefully the, the listeners right now, because a lot of my listeners, they love, I'm sure they're loving this conversation because they appreciate music on a whole. I'm going to just take some people behind the scenes. You see, when computers came in, it makes it so easy to find tracks that people get so used to playing the same track because they are located in the same folder, in the same spot. So it, it takes away creativity. Where back, back then, when you have your records, or for me, I won't even tell nobody somebody used to play records. Me, CDs. I know play records, but CDs was my time. When, mm-hmm. when, when, you, when, when you have to find a tune, you have to know where a tune is, and you have to select that tune. It takes a lot of memory, and right. it, it takes a lot of knowing. Like you, like you, you, you reference the term box. You have to dig in your box, dig in your crate, because you have to find a certain record and bust the dance. And people right. don't want to hear the same song where right. another song come and play. So it was a lot of pride. No, is that is like a fight for prime time. No, is a fight for. The three o'clock, four o'clock juggling, or everybody wants to come and play that top ten tune and so then bust the dance. That in itself is a whole other issue with dancehall. And that's the reason I'm gonna ask you, what's your opinion on if DJs have a part to play? Because it, it, there are so many different angles for the dancehall culture that there are so many issues. But I need to ask you this: What do you think? Is, is there a simple solution? Is there one solution, or what is the first step? Is it? Is it? The, is the onus on the fans or is the onus on the creators of the music? The onus is on the fraternity. The same way 
Puffy and Jay Z and Russell um, Simmons and them man they jet together and they and they and they streamlined hip hop and made it into a billion dollar business and they were like okay Lego the gun songs Lego the killings Lego the East and West Coast thing bring in the, the dirty South Atlanta man them bring in the Midwest man them like Nelly and them and make this into a, a solid genre it, it would take dance hall people to understand that strategy and sit down and be like the bounties, the beanies, the sly and robbies, you know what I mean? These people who are integral in the in the in the industry to sit down and be like, yo, this is how we gotta get this back on track. And how are they gonna get it back on track? Again, the DJ used to be the educator. The DJ was the the, 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 the king of the dance because he would be like brand new terror fabulous, get to know this, you know, um almighty God rhythm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, these DJs now don't even know what rhythm half their songs are on. They, they, they can't teach the fans. The fans don't know. The fans need to be taught. So it's like, whatever the DJ gives them, they're going to jump to. Because they just want to get high and get drunk and jump. True. So if it's whipping Nene, it's whipping Nene. You know what I'm saying? It's, if it's Justin Bieber, what do you mean? It's what do you like? They they're gonna take whatever they're given. So what do we give them? That's where you have to start, and it's it, it's those people that have to have to stop with this. Yo, my God, the house may be good at mine, and yo, so so, and it's like yo, they need to stop this. This is high school things, like. They, they, their industry is dying, and if they don't realize it, nobody can save it. True, nobody but, cannot but save you it. Know, you know, though, come just get a text from Bridging Chira in Spanish, though, and I was, I was going to bring this up. You remember, like your real reference, Gullibop, right? Right. Before Gullibop, uh, right before Gullibop, in terms of um, beef or in terms of issues, where it looked weird, it was Bounty and Tommy Lee. Right. Well, you, re- you talk about the fraternity. Right. Big bad bounty killer. Big bad bounty killer versus Tommy Lee. And I have had many a discussions with selectors trying to convince me that if bounty take on Tommy Lee in Jamaica, anywhere, Tommy Lee kill him. Me have people, yeah. I have people <laughs> telling me that Ninja... Free of the gully bop. That's why Ninja never take on gully bop. No, no, man. If I was them artists, uh, like you, I like Bounty. You notice Bounty take a huge back step out of the business. It obvious him separating himself from dancehall. Where him just is almost like him bored. Them man, they're the fraternity we are talk about. You don't hear nobody talk about cabra. You don't hear nobody talk about elephant. They're not them man then. and. It, it just when you talk about the frat guy, I, I agree with the fraternity, but there is somebody above the fraternity who is pulling the strings. Somebody who's no. separating apart. No man, there's somebody that know which string to pull. They're not pulling the string. These guys are can can, can know which string to pull just as much as whoever else is, is is knowing which string to pull. The problem is disrespect. We go back to that. This the mighty sparrow. You know the sparrow, mighty yeah. sparrow, right? Yeah. No artist, soca artist in the world who's been conceived as of now could ever go on a stage and call Sparrow Goathead. They would never have a career again after that. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying to you. Tommy Lee could disrespect Bounty. That should never happen because you cannot diss the mighty Gabby. You cannot diss Sparrow and Lord Kitchener. If you even attempted to do that, your, your career done. But we've turned into this bacchanal thing in, in, in dance hall where, oh, you know, Boots and Tommy Lee, where Tommy Lee is now? Oh, yeah. on TV, balling for a squeeze because, yo, you boots up yourself to go take on Killer. And in Jamaica, people are laughing at you and saying, yeah, you're the man. But in the rest of the world, people are like, yo, from your this Killer, you're done. True. Because out here, we respect the veterans in the industry. In, in Jamaica, a lot of these guys are taking on these, these veteran artists to get a buzz. But the problem is you can't get a buzz and you're not good. And I call Tommy Lee from day one and I get enough fight for them. Like, Tommy Lee will never make it as an artist in this industry. He's not talented enough. He does not have the draw in that is needed to, to sustain um, 
fans in, in this day and age, and that's why these guys are all one-hit wonders from Potential Kid to all of them, because they're not real artists. The same Ninja Man, Shaba, Bounty. Do you know how many times they had to audition? Do you know how many times they had to go and squeeze the microphone at a dance for five seconds and perform and captivate the crowd before they bust? These guys are busting and then can't perform because when they're recording their vocal in the bathroom because they're shy, now they get on a stage in front of 20,000 people and they're like, what? I got to perform in front of all these people? They can't connect with the crowd. They don't know how to dance. They don't know how to do anything when they start to get boo. They blame the DJ. Yo, the man, I mixed me wrong. Like, everything they can do to just admit that they're just not good. It's the not good people that keep getting pushed forward. So when you go see them performing, you're like, yo, the man not even bust a, a Willie Bounce nothing. The man just hold a Hennessy bottle in one hand and the mic in the next hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're not going to pay $50 to see that. So the like, elephant so, man so will like Ramadan. Throw, so like you throw a word after Movada, you know. <laughs> but I'm just, no, I'm just saying, like, it is, there is an art to it. The same mm. way, anywhere I go and somebody's like, Babs, give me a video drop. And I'm like, all right. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. They're like, yo, you shot that out in one, one attempt. I'm like, yeah, man. Yo, the last person I had to, they had to do a hundred takes. Yeah, but because I've been in front of the video camera for years now. True. So I know what to do. I know what level my voice is supposed to be. And I know how to make my expression so you're going to laugh. I know how to find the quirky things to say that make you laugh. Like, you know, cargo complexion went from Milo with no condensed milk to Horlicks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's the line of the week. Everybody's killing me with that. And I didn't even, I didn't even think about that line. I just made it up on the spot. So it's like when you have talent in what you do, it will shine. You can't force nothing, and you can't, you can't manufacture talent. Talent is either you have it or you don't. You same bolt. Someone saw him running. He was fast. Okay, show him how to run out of a starting block. Show him how to run with a gun now. Show him how to run with cleats on his foot. You can't just jump up a day, junior culture, you and say, yo, man, go on, run 100 meters still, you know. But fast, you know. You can't pick it. It picks you. So dancehall music, being a DJ, it picks you. These new artists don't even know when their vocals have on too much reverb. Enough of them don't even know what an ad lib is. Enough of them don't even know what a proper eight bar intro is. Like they don't have no clue, none of the ins and outs. So when some engineer comes and tells them, yeah, yo, just run with this, and they don't understand why them music sounds bad, it's like just because a man is a mechanic doesn't mean he knows how to fix a Benz or a Beamer. True, true. Just because a man is a barber doesn't mean he's going to give you the proper feed and lineup. True. So just because a man is an engineer doesn't know how, mean he knows how to mix music and, and master music properly. Just because he says that's his title. True, true. And that's where we got to get back. It's technical stuff. It's the real It's the real lack in the technicalities in dancehall. The bass line's too thin in songs. The, 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 the snare is wrong. It doesn't sound like dancehall. You know what I mean? The, like, this is so much technical, technically wrong with dancehall nowadays. Nobody I'm... doesn't want to hear a Jamaican on a techno beat. They want to hear a Jamaican on dancehall. Hey, hey. They don't, don't want to hear... No, don't not for real. This... They don't want to hear... They don't want to hear you rap. They want to hear Lil Wayne rap. True. Your drink rap. True. Don't even they want to hear you say flex. Yeah, don't flex. Even, don't even get me started on the, on the, on the ping ping beats, no. Yeah. Hey. Right. So hey. you see what I'm saying? So it's like, as much as Jamaica trying to run in and be like America, America's pushing them back and saying, no, when you come back as a Jamaican, we'll, we'll take you. We don't want you being Americanized. We hmm. want you to be Jamaican. So it's like these hip hop sounding dancehall beats. Nobody want to hear that. Yo, they want to hear dancehall. They want a bogo and tatty. But Bridget, try. Just text me and say, you sound like you're a manager. So let me just take this time to plug. Your, you know what? You tell the people and what you do for some artists of your own. Okay. So. I have a group called Ragamuffin Entertainment, which um, I work with five artists that are, are reggae artists. So Marsville, Tabitha, Buggy Nakente, Miguel, and Tian Winter. So when, what I've done with them is they are exceptionally good singers, but they've gotten a really big fight in reggae because they're not Jamaican. So we've been working on, you know, a project for, like, Tabitha Marzil to do an album, you know, and do work together because that's, I know basically enough 
in the industry to know, you know, who has the right reggae beat for whose voice and, and, and Ray Tay Tay. So, yeah, I'm kind of a manager. I'm not the person that you're going to call for bookings, and I'm not that person, but I'm like the link. So a lot of producers will link me and be like, you know, I have a rhythm here, Babsy. I need two artists to voice on it. A singer, a chanter, or a sing jay. And I'll be like, all right, I got this youth over in Antigua, and then I have this youth over in St. Kitts. Try them. So I do a lot of that. Like, even on one of my blogs, I was talking about, you know, little Rick and Kerwin Dubois never knew each other, and I introduced them. And then three months later, they made Monster Winer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it was like big, huge hit. You know what I mean? But it was like, you were not going to see my name in the credits. You're not going to see my, hear my name in the song. But Rick and Kerwin both know I introduced them to each other. And they know that when I link them, I'm not linking them on nonsense. So if I pick up the phone and call Kerwin Dubois right now, and I'm like, yo, junior culture is going to be in Miami. You have to go draw for him on Saturday. He's going to draw for you on Saturday because he knows that I'm not going to call him on some nonsense thing. They, most people know I'm not about games. True. So I'm a, I'm a middle man woman. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that's, why, I, that's why I just had to, just in case some people going to hear this recording or some people listening and, and ready for true word, but how you attack. So just to let people know that right. you, you are, you are ragamuffin entertainment when they hear me bigging up ragamuffin entertainment when they hear me playing the tea on winter when they heard tabitha live on my show you are right the, right right you are the bobsy that people that tabitha was talking about that was pushing right her right so just right. to make them know that what, what you're saying right now is yes it's an opinion but it's it's an opinion that is not coming from a dark hole it's coming from well, knowledge I- on top of that, right, I play 14 instruments, like saxophone, piano. I played piano for like 19 years. Like, I am a musical person. You know, I was supposed to go to Germany, and my dad wouldn't let me go because he was like, you, you can't go out there. Hitler used to live there, you know. You black. You better stand <laughs> out here. You know what I mean? But, like, I am not somebody. So if I tell you your auto-tune is grainy or it's out of key, trust me, it's out of key. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's those things where a man would look at me and be like, yo, she say, out of key. What's your talk, say? And the engineer would be like, yo, it sounds good to me. And it's like, no, you better believe me. Cause that engineer t- does not even know how to find middle C on the piano. So you better take my word for it. Cause I know music. He don't. He know how to do Pro Tools and make a beat. And Q bass and that big day. So it's like, it's a lot of that. But for, 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 for what I do now and like the direction I'm going in, I've been more involved in larger scale events. Like, so the reggae on the hills, you know, like the cultural events for the islands because the, 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 the nitty gritty details with the, with the, with the dance hall artists at Ground Zero, for me, I, I can't deal with that. I can't do it no more. I can't do it no more. Yeah, it's too much, you know, egg yell, you know, turn around, more, I see, you yeah, like, yo, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man. But, yo, it's a business. Stop and, that. And that is where, I'm just to make people know, Sky, you know, your, your purpose for being on the show today was to let, just give you a platform to hear out your side. And if the media, if the, surf, if the social media trolls going to keep trolling, let it do what they do. But this is, this is, should serve as validation. For right, what right, you're right, talking right. about. You see what I'm saying? For right. people who, who didn't know, they should know now. And if, if you don't believe Babsy, go out there and ask people who you respect and let they will tell you. I promise you, they will tell you that, yeah, it is coming from a real place. So, you know, right. you know, that's why, that's why I, I always tell you, you know, the door is always open with me. That, 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 that's for 100% sure. But you know, man, yeah, man, I, my... I got to ask you this Go question, though, and it's, it's, a mm-hmm. real, it's a real serious question. Um, you're from Barbados, right? Yeah. And there's a famous artist from Barbados right now, Miss Rihanna, right? Right. And I know this sister from Barbados, and all the Bayesians I know, Bayesian females I know, the whole lot of shape the same way. <laughs> no, I see your thing. I see your thing. I just have to. Me just want to know. If I just saw every bar, if I saw every Bayesian woman look, or I just owe them left off the island. I owe them left off, man. 
some, there some women in Barbados that's built like 18 wheeler truck, man. Yo. <laughs> yeah, but even if you built like 18 wheeler truck, you still, you, the, the back carriage still shape the same way. And yeah, still roll it's out. balanced. Yeah. It's the balance. It's the balance. Every, it, we, we're known to be the most balanced women in the Caribbean. So whatever is up top in the front, it's always matching what's down at the bottom in the back. That's just how it goes, man. I, I don't know, man. It, it's a combination of a few things, you know. Maybe it's the Atlantic Ocean breeze that, that's on one side in the Caribbean Ocean on the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Caribbean Sea. Uh, well, Caribbean. well, Keisha, big up yourself. Um, I'm going to have to say it. I don't think it's no breeze. <laughs> we have a feeling set in certain type of position. Let me leave with our Lord, yeah? Well, look, me, my brother Dwayne Babb is listening and his wife, my <laughs> sister Carmela, is listening. So please keep this PG because my nephews are listening. Oh, big up the nephews every time. Big up the whole Babsy yeah. family. Hey, that's how me and yeah, Babsy talk, you know? That's why yeah, we're we going to keep it clean. <laughs> We gonna keep it clean. So, but, and oh. Kevin's listening too. Kevin, the Rasta man, listening too. You know, you don't, you, you don't really want to test the Rasta man fire. God, Rastas get vexed and they ready. You know, hey, it. hey, grape juice, give me more grape juice, grapefruit juice. No, <laughs> no lemonade here. Cause me and Bob's your brother and sister. I'm good. Hey, <laughs> hey, I don't want no big black Chevy truck park up outside my front house. <laughs> hey, all right, cool. <laughs> so, Bob's, what's next for you? Say, say that one more time. What is next for you? Well, yeah, we're just trying. Right now, I am working on just expanding the brand now that, you know, a lot of the turmoil in my personal life is over. So, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to do, especially when it comes to Caribbean music, Caribbean culture and entertainment. Take it to that mainstream level. So we're working on just a strategy to get me, to get out there, to get the rest of us out there as well. So it's not that I'm trying to get out there and leave everybody, but I, I, we need to get a break through the door so that the rest of us can come and follow. So that's really what we're working on right now. I'm going to be traveling through the Caribbean uh, as normal. Uh, carnival season is coming up in St. Vincent and Grenada and Barbados. Um, so we're making stops all over. I'm going to be in Houston for a cooler fest July 16th. So um, that's supposed to be really big. Apparently, like, I, I heard, like, tickets are sold out already. Like, it's supposed to be huge. So me and the Spoiled Brats team are going to be out there for that. So it's just a lot going on, just trying to trot forward and stay forward. Um, I'm bringing in, um, I'm letting you know this now. Nobody else even knows this. I was given a 360-degree camera to be one of the new groups on YouTube to uh, do the 360-degree videos. So most of the carnivals that I go to now, I will be f recording the footage in 360-degree video footage. Wow, wow. So that means that you'll, you'll be able to take pictures of all the stalkers walking behind certain females. Yeah, right? so I just have to walk. So anybody behind me, I'm going to see who's giving me screw face. I'm going to see who's flinging their hand behind me and telling me to go. I'm going to see all of that. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's on YouTube now. Um, so when you... You might see a few videos come up where you can kind of like drag it around and then see the person behind them. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of that stuff now, too. I'm um, just trying to, you know, go back to the YouTube grind. And I'm going back to the vlogs that made me happy originally. So we're going back to that kind of just, you know, a little bit of humor, a little yeah. bit of, 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 of lesson learning thing, but mixing it back up. Like, like how it used to be. You know what I mean? And the people need to know that you keep it very raw. Right, right, right. Real. Right. Don't, don't, don't let your children, um, don't let your children um, watch that unless you're ready. Because they might say something back to you that you might not be ready to hear. And I know your son is, 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 is all you. So don't let him hear me out because yeah, he's going <laughs> he, he he to keep the drive your car tomorrow and you might not even know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, pe so people who don't care, follow her at Strictly Bobsy, right? Right. All and my day-to-day -day blogging 
is um, imbabzi.com. Um, I, that's where I put a lot of my blogs, my, my takes on situations going on in the world. And then the entertainment blog is strictlybabzi.com. So I have the two sites. And before I go, I just want to big up my dad tomorrow. It's his birthday, Bentley. You know what I mean? I can't say how old he's going to be because he might be mad. But, um, yeah, if it wasn't for my dad still, man, I don't know. My dad really, 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 really um, showed – uh, my brother and I a lot when it comes to, you know, understanding different angles and this whole devil's advocate and being sure when you say something that you know what you're talking about. And, you know, so I have to give him that because he, he, he did he did lay the foundation properly for my mind to work to, to work right, you know? See it there. See it there. So big up Pupa Babzi. Pupa Babzi. Yeah, and for, the, and for the people out there that, you know, keep trying to think that children don't need a father in their life, I'm telling you, they do. Because it's things that my father taught me about being a woman and, and being a female that my mother wouldn't know about. And um, I don't think I would have been half as successful as I am in life had I not grown up with a father like my dad who was just really always hands-on, like, you know, your work, your homework done, yeah, oh, I come in to check, you know, like, he was always just nuts, you know what I mean, like, he was just, like, up in everything, he would come home from school, and he smell you here, he's like, the people smoking dope on the street corner, you know, he was, he was not, he wasn't a babysitter, he was just always, you couldn't trick him too easy, that's why when people tell me, you know, the kid tricked him, I'm like, boy, you're, you're soft, cause, yo, I could have never tricked my dad in nothing in life. You know what I mean? He would have seen me a mile away. So, you know, start to think about the fathers and, 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 and make sure you're just not out here breeding like rabbits and ting. Try to get a man and a real father in your life for your children's life so you could breed and make some babsies. You know what I mean? Make some I, I told a few more of me out here. Make some babsies. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, man. We say we're going to keep yeah, it man. clean, but it's so like something is, <laughs> you know... Hey. No, man, no, man, no, 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 no. I, me having babies, that's, that's, that's a while. That's going to be a little bit in the works, you know? Zine, a little Zine. bit in the works. Don't worry, you'll be the first to know. You're going to be the godfather. You know what I mean? See, see, I'm going to send a 360-degree camera for, for the baby to, you know? Hey, hey. <laughs> well, Bobby, you You're don't know, good. sir. You don't know, well, on air, you don't know it's always been a pleasure. But behind the scenes, you don't know me and your link. Strong, 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 yeah, strong, man. strong. So you don't know, so just love, love the energy. The people, and like me say, my phone is blowing up. Right now, my phone battery run out, and it's on the charger. <laughs> so I'm here texting people, and I'm talking to you, and them loving the vibes. So you don't know, keep up the good work. You yeah, are, man. regardless of what Jamaicans want to say, you are carrying the banner, carrying the flag for the whole Caribbean, representing yeah, us man. as a whole. So keep up the good work, mama. I appreciate it. Then that's for you, man. You know, you've been there, like, really from day one. And, and I just want to let you know, like, I don't get to talk to you as often, but the love is still there. You know, I appreciate everything that you've done, all the assistance you've ever given me. You know what I mean? Because I don't forget people, you know, as much as I am busy, my inbox right now has, like, 400 unread <laughs> messages. It's like, don't ever feel for a day I don't have your back. I always have it. See it there, see it there. I know that for sure, man. They don't yeah, know. Man. I'm it, I'm I'm gonna let you introduce the next segment because I'm going to go into the real tone, R and B rocker style till the top yeah. of the hour. So I'm going to introduce the next segment right now. All right. Well, the next segment coming up is the one for the mad them that don't know how to treat their women. You should have taken her out every once in a while, <laughs> taken her to dinner on the fancy style, showed her a life that's all worthwhile. But now I guess you got to walk an extra mile. I'm um, Babsy. Love you guys. Talk to y'all soon. Bye bye. Little more, mama. Bless up, Zane. Yeah, man. All right, bless.